Golf Central on YouTube, brought to you by the Chrome Soft Golf Ball from Callaway. Hello, I'm Anna Jackson, and this is your Golf Central update. Well, Gabby Lopez captured her third LPGA Tour win last week at the Dana Open in Ohio. The Mexican fired off a bogey-free 63 in her final round, capped off with three straight birdies to finish her round. And earlier today, Gabby joined Damon Hack and Eamon Lynch on Golf Today. Gabby, congratulations on your victory. Four strokes back to start the final round. What was your game plan when you teed off yesterday? Try to keep it simple. I knew that, um, you know, trying really, trying too hard sometimes, it takes you away from from where you want to be. So, um, yeah, try to make it as simple as I could. Try to create more quiet time on my pre-shot routine so I could execute, execute better shots. Gabby, yeah, 8-under-63 is a phenomenal round of golf. What was the most important shot that you hit yesterday and why? <sighs> That's an interesting question. Um, I'm going to say that putt on 13. Um, I've been hitting it really close. I missed a six footer or nine, and then I missed another six footer and 11 for birdie. And I had so many chances for birdie, and that 13th hole gave me the momentum to keep going and thinking that I could have a chance. That's all I was hoping for. If I can get a chance, if I can get a chance, then um, we might be able to close it out. And, you know, thankfully, I didn't have to play a any playoff after the win gabby you said that sometimes your biggest competition isn't necessarily against the rest of the field but sometimes against yourself can you explain what you meant by that yes um i think we all have this great ability to play golf but you know i have now this this mental coach um stephen yellen and he helped me a lot to identify that we all can access to that um great golf we have all within by staying in the moment and sometimes overcoming you know your fears and your doubts it's a bigger win than winning over the field and that's to me you know sometimes when you get into this role of negative thoughts and all of a sudden you see yourself accomplish great things I think that's when magic happens. Gabby the COVID-19 pandemic was a very difficult time for so many around the world we just spoke to our, our good friend Ron Syrak who thought that when you won uh, at the, uh, the Diamond Resorts then Tournament of Champions that you lost a little momentum with the stoppage of the LPGA season. How much did you feel that you did lose a little momentum that you had built uh, in Orlando with a chance to kind of capitalize on that victory? 100%. I did lose a little bit of momentum. Um, it was hard because, you know, being able to practice for so long <laughs> and then with no competition, and coming into 2022 and at the beginning of the year, February, March, I got myself into two injuries, uh, a neck injury and a wrist injury. And that also kind of slowed me down. And honestly, I played really frustrated golf for the last couple months. It's been really, really hard <laughs> mentally able to to believe that I could play, but I couldn't connect it um, until this week. So much of the attention yesterday, Gabby, was on Lucy Lee and Lexi Thompson at the top of the leaderboard. Did that help you in a way that the noise was all directed at them and allowed you to focus on the job at hand? For sure. Um, it's not, it's not, nothing easy um, playing in the last group and, you know, having the lead. It's, it's always hard. Um, you're expecting to win. Everyone is expecting you to play well. So sometimes when you're coming from behind, it's just kind of, it's a little nice, comfortable zone, uh, knowing that you just got to keep the gas pedal down. Um, a lot of things are not in our control. I always think that sometimes winning comes with a little bit, a little bit of luck, you know, a lip out from another player or a good bounce. Um, you know, so I'm really happy that, you know, kind of luck went my way this week. You have joined Lorena Ochoa as LPGA winners from Mexico. She's a World Golf Hall of Fame member, an absolute legend in the game. Well, I'm just curious what kind of impact she had on you growing up in this game. Amazing impact, everything. I mean, she's the reason I am a professional golfer. And till today, mm -hmm. I text her and she calls me every single week. <laughs> We're in constant communication. She has been a great friend and a great mentor. I've learned so many things. Uh, I had the opportunity about three months ago to be in Mexico City with my with my caddy, uh, Carlos. And we were working our routine and we were working our communication. And she was like, hey, you gotta be very, very precise every single time has to be exactly the same so Carlos can catch up 
and see when you are nervous, when you're intense, when you are rushing. So uh, being able to have that feedback and being able to train with her it has been has been great. That's a heck of a mentor to have. What what are your expectations for yourself going forward now, Gabby? Is it winning more consistently? Is it major championships? How how have your goals shifted? I try not. To, I don't. I really want to not think about it because um, I just feel that the best years of golf from Gabby are about to show up. They are just kind of releasing themselves. So I think that um, you know, I just want. I don't want to put a number. I don't want to put a limit. I don't want to put a a ranking. I really want to see how far I can go by doing what I can do and control what I can control day by day. Eight events left in this season. I'm just curious, how do you kind of maintain your stamina? That was something that Nelly Korda talked about a lot at the end of last year, especially when you're in contention and you win, that there's kind of a bit of a, of a lull or letdown that can happen. Where's your energy level at this point in the year? I think it's going to be not as bad as last year. I am actually going to be more, more focused on recovering and nutrition. I wasn't uh, that focused on that in my previous years. So now I have this life coach and nutritionist that helped me, you know, to see what is actually going to make me recover much faster and, you know, much more efficient. So um, I feel that I have a little more of en <coughs> energy. Probably haven't played as much as uh previous years but I also think that that's part of you know a career and we all gotta we all gotta watch our bodies and we gotta watch our mind well sure fun to watch yesterday Gabby congratulations on LPGA win number three we'll speak to you soon well meanwhile the DP World Tour is heating up as Rory Rahm and some of the world's best descend onto Wentworth Golf Club just outside of London for the BMW PGA Championship. Here is a look at some of the big stars in the field. You can see the likes of Rory McIlroy and John Rahm leading the way. You've also got defending champion Billy Horschel and US Open champion Matthew Fitzpatrick in the field. But because this is a DP World Tour sanctioned event, they do have company in the form of 18 live golfers who are rejoining the field at Wentworth, including the likes of European legends Ian Poulter, Lee Westwood and Sergio Garcia. Yeah. I spoke with our very own Rex Hoggard about the potential tension between players of both tours. How do you think the live golfers will be treated this week? Keith Pelley has been very adamant to say that they won't be affected by any sort of disadvantages, but no doubt the response to them is, is bound to be pretty cold. I think Keith Pelley in a memo he sent to players last week called it, quote, strong opposition for having these players in the field, and that might actually be understating it. If we're being honest, let's just go back two weeks to Roy McIlroy talking about coming here, playing with those 18 players. He said it was going to be difficult. And these are friends that he these are people that he's been around with. He's, he's served on Ryder Cup teams with. So you get an idea of where the lines are being drawn. And I think we're going to see that this week because, again, I'll go back to the Scottish Open and that stay allowed those three players into the field. But because it was so late, essentially, they just put them on their own tee time. They put them essentially on their own island. They won't have that opportunity this week. 18 players will be mixed into the field. You'll have players who are pro PGA Tour and pro Live Golf playing right next to each other. It's going to be awkward to say the least. Well, that's it from us here on this Golf Central update. Have a wonderful evening. We will see you tomorrow.